So everyone seems to be hating on this new Sony a7C camera that's been released and I think we should address some of the reasons why. And it's not necessarily obvious because it's actually on paper a good camera and maybe in reality it's a good camera as well. So uh, let's dig deeper. So the a7C, a compact version of their uh, a7 III camera, uh, and it rhymes as well. Essentially, it is the a7 III in a compact body, the same as their a6600. Now, why are people hating on it? I believe it's for a few reasons. Firstly, price category, and they've released it slightly below the a7 III, which was, when it came out, a really good price. However, that is two years old now, or it might even be older than that. And the A7C has all of the same tech. They haven't added anything else to it really. Um, or right, a few little minor increments like the autofocus is just a dash better, but it was good already. Um, and they've added a flip screen, which is really good news to see Sony doing it. But I mean, that's not technically an upgrade from I don't know, a spec point of view, it's just making it more user friendly, which the Sony cameras haven't been that user friendly in the past, so it's good to see them doing that. So in the long run, I mean, what we've got is just more of the same, but in a, a more usable fashion, and that is really good. But people don't like it because I think there's this air of professionalism if you've got a slightly bigger camera. And uh, of course, a lot of people don't like the viewfinder on the smaller APS-C range. So now the C version of this full frame camera has the same as that. I think there is also that reason. This camera falls into a really weird bracket, right? Because you've got entry level cameras, which in my mind are below a thousand pounds. And then you've got the pro cameras, which range anywhere from a thousand upwards. And usually with Sony are 2000 plus. And this sits in the mid range and it's really awkward because so let's say me as an example, I couldn't justify spending £2,000 on a, a camera that's used for like YouTube. So I was looking at the APS-C range and when it comes down to it, the extras that the 6600 had like a slightly bigger battery and IBIS, although they are great, I couldn't justify spending £600 when uh, the camera like the 6400, which I've bought and I've got a video coming soon on, um, was under a grand, so that's the one I went for. And this is the whole issue, really. The, the 6600 it is too expensive. It should be probably about 1,100, 1,200 at most. And if they'd have released this A7C at 1,500, I think everyone would have gone, yeah, this is a really great camera, let's go for it. But because it's just a little bit more than that, everyone that would want to buy it technically can't justify spending on it. So another reason I think people got annoyed about the release of this camera is because they positioned it as an entry level full frame camera. And that's great news. And yes, it is entry level in the Sony range, but the price point, when you compare it to when Canon released their RP, which was I think around a thousand pounds or it might've been under. Now, yes, the specs were a lot lower, um, but because of that price point, it made it accessible. The same with the like, 6D Mark II. It was more accessible, whereas this Sony is almost double the cost. I think that is the, the crucial thing here. It all stems back to cost, right? And of course, if you look at, if, if we stick with YouTube, for example, the, the pro YouTubers that have enough revenue coming in each month can justify spending that. And if they're gonna spend that, they're all going for the A7S3 instead. So it kind of leaves a little bit of a shortfall. Um, and of course you also have to bear in mind if you buy full frame, all of the lenses suddenly double in price as well. Uh, the good thing with Sony is that you can use the um, APS-C lenses with it. So, you know, look, there's no perfect camera, there's no perfect lens, but I think these are some of the reasons. So I just think the price point versus the specs, there was no increase in specs. Like if they had added 4K 60, I think everyone would have been more than happy to pay the price, or even if they'd have left it at, you know, around the 2000 mark, I think they would have been fine. But because they didn't add that, it just felt like, well, look, this is two year old tech and we're getting nothing extra for it other than a flip screen, which is great if you're vlogging, it's great for taking photos of yourself for like social media, but for pros, um, there's kind of no benefits there. And uh, 
I think that is the issue. Otherwise, I think it's a great camera and it does give people um, that are in this middle bracket, you know, I've got a lot more choice now. You can choose the Fuji X-T4 uh, or you've got, you know, the 6600, but I think that is almost gonna be irrelevant now. You might as well just spend that extra 200 and get the A7C. So it's a great camera. It's like a really annoying timing because I literally bought my 6400 about, well, about a month ago now. So, uh, and they released it probably weeks after I, I purchased it. So I'm, I'm gonna stick with it for a while and I'm gonna see uh, what everyone, how everyone gets on with the A7C. Uh, but in my mind, you know, if you're gonna buy an A7 III, don't definitely buy the A7C, it makes sense. It's just, if you were looking for better specs, that was where the disappointment um, was from. So uh, that's my two cents, or should I say two pence? I'm UK based. Those are my thoughts. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? What do you think is the reason why people have been hating on this camera? And would you consider buying it or is it a complete no-no from you? If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell as well so you get future notifications of when my videos are coming out and you can join me on these little discussion points and of course reviews and all sorts in the future. Have a great day and I'll see you soon. Peace.